Welcome. This is from Lansing to the Lakeshore, our legislative update on what's happening in the 24th Senate District and actually across the state. And today we have with us a wonderful guest who does a lot of the uh, tabulations, accounting, and projections for legislators when we look at what our revenues will be, what they have been, and where we need to project in the future. So I'd like to, to welcome Gary, who, Gary Olson, who is the director of the Senate Fiscal Agency, uh, to our show today. And we're going to talk about what's happening in Michigan, what's happening with our economy, and where we think we'll be, where we hope to be, and what's happening with our budgeting. And do that in less than 30 minutes, Gary. What a challenge <laughs> you've given me, Senator, but I'll, I'll try my best. Thank you. Well, welcome. Thank and you. first of all, please, will you talk to us about what the Senate Fiscal Agency does? Thank you. Yeah, the Senate Fiscal Agency is a nonpartisan agency that is, been, is established by state law. And our primary function is we work for the state Senate but we're nonpartisan and our fun our, we have several primary functions. We staff the Appropriations Committee where the spending decisions are made. We're also responsible for doing analysis of all legislation taken up in the Senate and that's available um, to the public as well on the Michigan Legislative website. And then um, more important to today's discussion, we're responsible for doing economic and revenue forecasting for the, for the State Senate and those, forecast, those Senate forecasts that we prepare are then used as the basis for the official Michigan State Government um, economic and revenue forecast that we just actually completed last Friday, May 15th. And, and we want to talk about those, but first of all, I, I would like people to understand, again, um, that you are nonpartisan. So you staff the committees, no matter the Senate whether they're the Republican committees or the the Democrat committees, you also, when we ask you, have to go to our caucuses and update us on the information that you have. So we don't each, I'm, some people right. think that each party has their own fiscal agents and that's not true. You are nonpartisan. You are there to present the facts as you know them and the facts as you right. research them. Exactly right. And we, we, if asked, we will give options of things to do in the budget um, and, and we provide that information. Um, but we are nonpartisan. We work with both the Republican <laughs> and Democratic members of the Senate equally keep things confidential and we're no, I think we're an important link in this process. Our job, I've, I view our job is to provide you with very up-to-date, accurate information and then let you, the elected senators in this case, make the decisions on the future of the state. But we hope that by providing you good information, you'll make better decisions. And, and that is really important for people to understand that you are there to provide us with information so that we can hopefully make better decisions as we go forward. Um, we will put the website, the Senate Fiscal Agency website up on the, the screen um, so people can reference any of the materials or any of the figures and facts that we talk about today and I'll have you do that towards the end of the program. Okay. But as you've mentioned the quarterly revenue estimating conference. Can you, which was just held last week, um, first of all tell us a little bit about the revenue estimating conference and then tell us what you and the other economists who were there had for us as legislators, as policy makers, as we look to uh, developing our budgets now for the 010 year, the 2010 year. Yeah, by state law, at least twice a year, the con what's called the Consensus Estimating Conference meets. And by state law, that's the director of the Senate Fiscal Agency, myself, uh, the director of the House Fiscal Agency, Mitch Bean, and representing the governor of the state treasurer, Bob Klein. We all pres we bring to that public meeting, it was held last Friday in the Capitol, there are a lot of people there, we bring to that conference individual economic and revenue forecast. We listen to outside speakers. We had speakers last Friday on the national economy. We had speakers on the auto industry in particular, the impact of potential bankruptcy, General Motors, the bankruptcy of Chrysler, how many jobs might be lost as a result of that. Uh, we had speakers from the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago talking about interest rates and things. And then towards the end of the meeting, we compare the three forecasts that each agency brings in. And then out, then if there's a consensus, and a consensus means all three agree, 
and there was. We, out of that meeting comes the official economic and revenue forecast of the state, and that tells the revenue forecast, tells the governor and the legislature, under current law, this is the amount of revenue you have to spend. You can, they can exceed that, but only if they raise taxes, but it really it brings discipline to the process, so it isn't that the Senate says there's this much money, the House says there's this much money, the governor a different number. So this is, and we now have a new official economic and revenue forecast for the state, state of Michigan, and that's um, what came out of the conference last Friday. Unfortunately, the news was not particularly good. Um, we significantly revised down the revenue estimates that we did in January 2009, reflecting really the rapid deterioration of primarily the auto industry in the state, but also the rapid loss of jobs nationally over the last 15 months. And when you factor all of that in and potential bankrupt or bankruptcy of Chrysler Corporation, almost assured, in my opinion, a bankruptcy of General Motors probably as soon as next week. Um, and look at that, what we're seeing is this, this very, very significant decline in state revenues, actual and projected, to the order of general fund revenues of the state in the fiscal year that lands September 30th, we believe, will drop by 20.7% over the year ago level, looking at another close to 10% drop in, the, in fiscal year 9-10 and about a 10% drop in school aid fund revenues at fund K-12 over two years. So a huge decline in revenues, which is really a result of a very sharp drop in employment in the state, the number of people working. Everybody knows that, right. but it has a huge impact on income tax collections, the new Michigan business tax, and sales tax collections, which are down this year about 9% from the prior year. So the revenue estimate comes out, we then say that, well, with these assumptions on spending, this is the gap, and that's the governor and the legislature have a constitutional obligation to pass a balanced budget, and that's where the discussion is now going forward, what to do with this gap between projected revenues and uh, projected expense spending of the state. And as you mentioned, the deficit or the projected deficit should we spend at the rate that we were spending last year. Um, I want to reiterate what you also said about the fact that we do have to have a balanced budget. I know some people get us confused with the right. federal government. The federal government can deficit spend, uh, but the state of Michigan can't because we have a constitutional amendment, and I'm very grateful, thank God, we do have a constitutional amendment that says we must have a balanced budget. So even as we talk about deficits, it's deficits if we continue right. spending at the rate of spending that we have done this year. The only, th you're absolutely correct, and I say this all the time, the only thing we know for sure is that by October 1st, which is the start of the next state's fiscal year, um, the state will, will pass a budget that's balanced between right. estimated revenues and appropriations. Yes, there's a projected deficit, but that again is only looking at if we continue basically to spend money in the same amount we're spending in the current fiscal year with the revised revenue estimates, there's a gap between estimated revenues and projected spending. I mean, that gap will, be dis will disappear. How it disappears, that is the decisions that will be made jointly by the governor and the members of the legislature in the, probably the, hopefully the next two months. And that's a huge challenge. I mean, it's just a huge challenge for the legislators, for us to have to make these very, very tough decisions, and obviously for the people of Michigan going forward. This is a time of unprecedented, I think we could say, an economic time of unprecedented um, efforts to deal with all these issues, and how we deal with them is going to also be important for our future. Um, we can't deficit spend, we don't have the money to fund the programs, even at this year's level. And a lot of people will tell you, I know a lot of my constituents tell me, um, who represent programs that are funded somewhat or mm -hmm. entirely by the state, that they've been underfunded this year. And we know that we can't fund them the underfunded amount that we did this year going forward. Right. So as we look at these decisions, um, First of all, tell me what, as legislators, the options are as you see them. 